Samson so special is that in spite of all the glamour and the glitter, it still retains its old town charm. And one of the people who adds significantly to that charm is 79-year-old Francis Whitaker. He's one of America's finest blacksmiths. Our photographer, Tom Myers, went to his shop and saw him work on what he calls one of his most difficult pieces. You either master the material or it masters you. I am a blacksmith for 64 years. Right now I'm working on a very elaborate and difficult balcony railing. You see, I cannot see it. The hand cannot make it. You have to be able to visualize what you're going to make and then make it. If you don't know what you're going to make, you can beat it, beat it around a, a all day. It has to go quickly. I know of no slow way to do this work. I know of no easy way to do this work. Well, this one, the scrolls were shaped in one plane, and then they were bent into another plane, or a compound curve. And that is one of the most difficult things there is to do. I am solely responsible for what I do. The quality, I think, goes back in craftsmanship and in all crafts for centuries, and that is pride in workmanship. Build something that will last forever. It takes an irrevocable decision to do the best work you possibly can. To so never short your job, never short your customer. I love it. I want to die with a hammer in my hand. Well, seeing the fancy balcony, this is an example of my first elephant on the left. My One of my seahorses forged out of one piece and the tail spread off. The first one I made is now in Australia. Been there for about 40 years. Huh. One of my biggest orders. <laughs> A man who had five fireplaces and wanted five sets of tools. <laughs> uh, a nice set of hand irons. Forged out of heavy stock. A fire screen with a combination brace and handle to fit an arch top fireplace. Never made handles like that before, but this is one of my nice andirons. The cups on the andirons are called posset cups, and they used to put a container in with wine and more wine in them. This was for Winthrop and Susan Lockwood. The initials are Susan Winthrop Lockwood and reversed on the other side. One of the many freestanding fireplaces I made was ribs that fitted fire brick so you could drop fire brick in and put a fire brick hearth in. Another corner freestanding fireplace. They were very efficient. And unfortunately, they're now not permitted. This is another very wide overhanging out of steel and covered with copper. Oh, one of the nice headboards involving some very nice forge welding and, and scroll work. A sign for a man's business, Wallingford's. This was a uh, banner for the Colonel Highland ski area. This is a water van with a seagull, and I use a bicycle pedal for a bearing. It's about the best bearing you could ever find. A cross for a church. That was a forge welded connection. A little corner balcony rail with the 
the specimens are all very even between the verticals. There was literally hundreds of feet of Victorian railings that are made in Aspen. A curved stair rail for the bathhouse in uh, Aspen. Hmm. Another build out. I don't know why they wanted that build out, but I was glad to make it. A very contemporary stair rail with a wild light fixture hanging over the platform. This is back in Carmel in the very early days. A railing out of three quarter square. Sample railing with lots of square work on it. Another rail with a little side brace to it right in the center of the one scroll projecting out with a foot to stabilize it. A uh, combination forge weld and scroll copper riveting. A balcony and a railing on a house next door to the mountain forge in Aspen. <coughs> A uh, very interesting railing, three quarter square, bowed out and bolted to the uh, either the treads or the balcony on a curve. A window grill for cattlemen. This is for Leon Uris with his freedom fighter in the center. The freedom fighter was about two inches high and I projected it on the back wall to make it full life size. I gave for a church in Golden, Colorado. They ordered the cross and the trinity, so I designed it accordingly. A frankly modern piece for the Aspen Institute. A little gate for home in Berkeley. It's one of the things that survived the Berkeley fire. Some candlesticks in the shop window of my forge in Aspen looking at the Aspen Mountain in the background. Very simple candle holder. Another candle holder. I forged the candle sockets out of three quarter inch pipe. Copper trays on the bottom. Uh, outdoor coffee table with wrapped joints where the spears connect. Another coffee table with a piece of diamond plate. As the base for another coffee table that was built of wood, and I incorporated that on. The four leaves are forged welded on. As the, that triple twist that I used for the uh, fireplace tool holders for the legs, a bracket for a wishing well in Aspen, One of my little door markers with the animal head. I like that pattern of frankly very modern door latch for a, quite a modern house. The hole above is for the cylinder lock. A front door handle and a Slide bolt. You can see I make my slide bolts long enough so you can 
one has to bend down or climb up on the ladder to open the head bolt. Lots of door hardware, all kinds of patterns. Again, this is a front door with a cylinder lock on the right. Pair of little slide bolts. <coughs>
در چه وقت آمد
This is the thumbnail on the bottom of a stair rail. Some very elaborate scroll work there. Very carefully done. And a nice job of the forged welded spears on the top. The rows of rings are very common almost everywhere. But there's a door knocker. It's, you don't see very often with that. Wonderful welded collar on it. One of the churches with crosses on every spire. Some very good repose work and good joinery. Lamp brackets on a big public building. But those little double offset corners are not as easy as a single one. Very tight pattern there. Again, very close knit pattern. Unfortunately, the, the flash was didn't help in some cases. Uh, I've never seen a, a canopy like that out of sheet metal and scroll work. A building tie for one of the stone buildings.
I missed this letter. Half that forged joint was rosettes on both sides of the connection. Detail of the hinge. There's the whole gate. Half lap joint on the slightly on the diamond, which is not easy to do. They were very skilled Scotch blacksmiths in New Zealand. And they had good iron work and good coal. And here are the results. Interesting pattern of scroll work, but the scrolls inside the circle. A door pull. My scroll, I imagine that was made by the same smith that made the previous one. Mm. One of the many buildings, oh yes, there's a different pattern for the brick ties, the building ties. A little finial up on the clock tower, and a little decorator then in the lower left corner also. Quite elaborate uh, balcony with very elaborate bases too. There's a close up of it. I've never seen that pattern before with the rings. Uh, Comes and there are rows of rings around the ring. Detail of a stair rail. Nice diagonal pattern there, and uh, very fine joinery too. Another simple railing. Again, the double top rail I like very much. It really sets the pattern off in between. As you can see, there's endless things that, oh, that, that railing had a a brace on the top instead of on the bottom. Very nice little people. Interesting forward spear. Simple but difficult wearing. I didn't pass up anything that was <laughs> made of iron. I don't know what that was for. There was nothing hanging on it. Just on the wall. There's a, an old, old building with a thin latch uh, and a padlock. Very heavy uh, red iron work there. Must have had a lot of molded dyes for it. There's another one, very, very heavy. And again, they used a lot of broad leaves out of 3 sixteenths plate.
I haven't paid so much attention to the bold art balcony until I had to make one. And believe me, they are not easy. Some of them have great big ricochet leaves on the corner like this one. Others are braced from underneath. Once in a while you'll find one with the brace reversed on the top. This one is the worst for wear. Very heavy one there. With a, uh, I don't know whether that was a sheet metal backing or not. This is a scroll work on the base of a lamp post. One of the fine public buildings. Nice little pattern, the oval in the center and the oval in the center here uh, have some very intricate uh, pass-through and joinery. Very formal lattice work. Lap joints and rosettes riveted. That was part of a little arm sticking out. And I wanted to uh, show the, the foil. This is a nice little balcony. There's a handrail with the baluster. The handrail passed through the vertical baluster at the bottom. <coughs> a door pull. Very nice forge work. at the bottom. Very fancy one on an old, old home. Very well beaten. I don't know what that was for. Either to hang something on or a, a bumper. Very solid. Nice forged balusters on that one. But you can see the lack of a, a double top rail does not show the whole thing off nearly as well. Another old door with very fancy brasses on it. The scroll go a lot of places. Ah, there's a nice wavy bar one there. And that one had no braces. This one has no braces uh, unless they were concealed in the stonework underneath. There's the lyre pattern which is very popular apparently all over the world. And again, iron does not have to be black. The New Zealanders were very fond of color. Interesting detail there at the bottom was the horseshoe shape and the little split scroll. 
Mr. Wilson. I'm beginning to think this is in Spain now. That looks more like Spanish ironwork than uh, New Zealand. <coughs> Very simple but effective. Dark wall, it was bowed out. And that one too. That one has double crossbars with the vertical girded in between. This is some a design I find very difficult to do, not symmetrical. I always want to make mine symmetrical. you can do with your hand and your hammer. It's wonderful. It's a very, very weathered piece. That must have been 15th, 16th century on a metal door. Some very fancy bosses with nice big nails. Simple door knocker. And look at the little carving just above it on the door. Yeah, this this is very, very old work, I would say probably 16th, 17th century. Unusual fastening there on the corner where it joins the masonry. These were not cast balusters. They were forged out of at least inch and a quarter round. Detail of a gate. Donarco with very simple bosses to go with it. That's one of the better balconies with the pattern, the Lazen's pattern on a diamond. This is another very old piece. Thank goodness they have wrought iron and they didn't uh, corrode so much. It's interesting to see the development of the skill of the smith from beginning with very simple and going on to perhaps the finest example, the Gothic work that you see so much in Europe. Again, this is those little diamonds are forged on the on the diamond. And a nice detail at the bottom there. Must have been fun to be a blacksmith in those days. Another half lap joint with a rosette on it. Oh, this is the aqueduct in uh, one of the Spanish cities. I can't remember which one. And there's a recessed tea plate with very fine pierced work around the end. Detail of some nice 
decorative carving on that railing. Uh, endless variety of work. But as I mentioned before, <laughs> all the photographs I took of balconies I never saw anyone on them. There's one with the very heavy plate decorations in the center. Oh, let's see. An elaborate street lamp. Some very nice door hardware. I would have reversed a twist, so one would be right and one would be left. Lots of heavy forged balusters. There's a nice detail of the, of the window grill where they put the little extra touch of the rosettes. And a door knocker. Simple but very effective window grill. That's passed through on the diamond. Some pretty well worn bosses with unusual nails and a very odd vertical finial on the top of this. Obviously, to discourage anyone from climbing over. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a wonderful age. And the Smiths there really were trained. They went through the apprenticeship, the journeyman, and the, up to the masters. And that's why the work is so fine. I don't know how they got those collars on after the bar was pierced through. Simple but very effective for a decoration on the back plate of a marker. Another good example of door hardware. Yes, this is in Spain again. Someday I'd like to do the other three quarters of Spain. I had one difficulty, and I was running out of film during the day. I would think one roll of 36 would last a day, but and very often I had to go back to the hotel and get more film. That's a, an unusual combination of squirrel. Oh, here's the shell house again. Uh, wonderful work there. Yeah. And when I did a workshop at Yellings, we uncovered some molding dies for forging those uh, tiles. And they were done as, as near as we could figure out by taking a large stock, roughing it out to shape, putting it in the dies, and then drawing the rest of it away in the sledge. They were not welded collars. So the baluster was one solid piece. variety to the little window grills and family
termites. This one's that was out of Ronstadt. And look at it closely. And look at all the junk and forge welding on it. Sign for a nice restaurant. The Gothic influence there. Let's see how it's set off by the little spacers in between. Base of an ambiron. Very fancy door hinges. Hmm. I, I, I can't place that one. A bell tower, a, a, I guess you'd call it a pergola top. balcony patterns were endless and notice those are curved out too. They must have had some very fine techniques of joinery because these were all done before the arc welder. And some of them 20, 30 feet long. Look at the nice carving in the center style of the grotesque head at the top. Uh, that's the fun tangle. Not a very formal one. This was almost a walkway that was supported by masonry. Someone's initial there in the center. Very fine fan light. Another one. The parallels for school work. Oh, yeah, this is, I think, in one of the hotels where we stayed, was they? A nice double top rail. Yeah, this was in one of the hotels. Lots of these were walkways that would go from one window to another. Oh, yes. Inside one of the small churches, they uh, spared no expense with their relief there. This is a lovely little piece. The shape of the opening that it fits into adds to the whole thing. Uh, a door knocker. Some nice leather handle with Paris plates and matching door bosses on it. detail of some very fine work on a gate. Nice garden gate. Uh, 
I like the way that one flows with the parallel lines. Somehow parallel lines can accent a piece. Another bowed out balcony. Believe me, those are not easy. Nice little sign bracket. And a very simple but decorative window grill. You find every range in Spain from the simple things to the extremely elaborate. Probably representing the, the change in technique and design over the centuries. Nice detail there. Still no people on the balconies, but lots of flower pots. Very elaborate. Lots of fancy jump welding on that. There's some Alarhorn, so we must be getting into Switzerland. Yes, this is probably Switzerland. Look at that big vertical baluster out of one piece. Yeah, yeah the fire thoughts signify Switzerland. Nice little detail on those gates and some tricky joinery. Uh, that's the most unusual one. A door grill. Another one. Unusual pattern. Nice joinery there too. <coughs> That speaks for itself. He's the village blacksmith. He has never made a horseshoe. Francis Whitaker is an artist who crafts iron. The first time I got hold of a piece of hot iron and an anvil, I knew that was what I wanted to do. The first time was 1922. At age 80, with hands too dirty to get clean anymore, he is still grabbing the hot iron from the forge. There's a fascination in taking a stubborn material and shaping it to your will. The quality that iron has that other materials do not have is its strength and its potential for beauty and it's up to the smith to bring out that beauty. Whitaker's decorative work can be found around the world, but it's most prevalent in Aspen, Colorado, where he has worked for a quarter of a century. The town's Victorian architecture is an ideal setting for the artistry of this blacksmith. His work is so popular, people stop him on the street to talk business. I was just wondering about these, uh, these are toes and uh, this ornamental work here. How many? Fifty. <laughs> uh, one would be enough. I'm just trying to figure out. Fifty, I won't live that long. <laughs> Still, at 7.30 every morning, he's back at his Mountain Ford shop. For the last 15 years, Whitaker has spent a lot of time passing on his knowledge and skills to other blacksmiths. 
But don't let the grandfatherly face fool you. He's from the old school and demands perfection and hard work. If you don't have the pride in your workmanship, you're not going to do your best work. And you're not going to get to the top. Whitaker says he's disappointed that he has not found a young blacksmith with the same pride and desire he has to join him at the top, to take over the business when he retires. Roger O'Neill, NBC News, Aspen, Colorado.